director Ramesh Verma presents this Ravi Teja Kiladi, I would say either with a sense of artistic arrogance or with a sense of insulting the intelligence of the viewer. For two and a half hours at a time when we are trying to get into the new normal, when we are trying to go back to the theatres to see good and nice cinema, even to just entertain ourselves, you have this Ravi Teja two and a half hour torture happening to you in a theatre. Like often, the upper seats in the multiplex is full, full with VIPs probably, their kit and kin. And in the midst of this, you have those who are catcalling. It is a culture shock for the sober to be sitting in the midst of this kind of din and watching the din and dust that the filmmaker throws at you. In short, if you can avoid Kiladi, avoid it like you would avoid COVID. Mask yourself sanitize yourself against this film. What is he doing? Film starts with some imaginary hundred crores, hundred thousand crores, moving in large vans from Italy to India through the sea. And they are all hidden as if you are hiding a few sandwiches somewhere. And then you have the intelligent police, Arjun playing the police officer who is trying to find out where this wealth is. There are two seeming claimants to this wealth. One is the big bad man who begins in the film, Mukesh Rishi as some home minister wanting to become chief minister. And then you have his son, Nitin Dhir playing Chinna Singham, who wants and who is the consignor of this huge booty of money sending it from Italy to India as I say. And then you have this whole drama enacted of how Ravi Teja, the hero, the Kiladi, named Mohan Gandhi, do not miss it. There are going to be references to the Mahatma, even if you and I are morons and do not don't see the obvious. Our filmmaker wants to drive home the point, and Arjun, the inspector, tells you that it is some kind of a nasty joke. And this booty has three claimants, as I said the minister on the one hand, there is David, played by Thakur Anup Singh, and of course, the police. Into this story comes the super of jail, Sachin, whose daughter is Meenakshi Chaudhary, played as Pooja, some kind of a psychologist is what she says, I do not know what. And then you have Dimple Hayati playing Chitra, the girl who gets a job and gets fired and then in a place owned by Rao Ramesh, who is the foster father of Ravi Teja. Now, this is the mota mota of the story. Ravi Teja is on the run you know what all he can do. He is that gravity and Rajini Kant defying physics of his. Two and a half hours objectifying women. You would have thought that all the templates of this larger than life villainish hero of Telugu cinema are done and dusted. But this time, the filmmaker goes into a smaller template. And the template is all that Ravi Teja has done and done and done as many times as you can recall. Perhaps he has done it as many times as he has been on cinema. Absolutely devoid of any novelty, absolutely devoid of any sanity. I would not understand why. 
an actor with the success rate of Ravi Teja would repeat and repeat only this and still expect his viewers to sit down and watch in awe? This is a bad film and the kind of violence that is used. There was a time when Ravi Teja's cinema had a kind of violence which was so ridiculous that you didn't mind enjoying it because it was ridiculous. But here there are some scenes where members of his family are killed, they are butchered. If this is entertainment, I am Christopher Columbus. Somewhere we, the collective audience, must put our foot down against this kind of cinema. I think this glorification of the negative, this amazing awe for, for bad wealth is creating a counter culture and drawing us towards the belief that this is possible and it is possible if you are superhumanly bad. I think we must collectively call the bluff. One simple way to begin it is stay away from Kilani. Thank you, Abhinav and Datu, for doing the here before and the here after for this. And uh, viewers, please write back if you have something to say. Keep in touch. Good day.